Welcome to the 50th episode of The Air Gun Show. To mark our half century, we've got a free competition to win the brilliant Tracer Lead Ray F600 Lamping Kit. We've also got the BSA Scorpion SE on test, but before that, I might try to bag a few wood pigeons from the hide. Like hide shooting for wood pigeons today. Now, I was actually out here stalking rabbits yesterday evening and saw a lot of pigeons flighting to a freshly drilled crop on the other side of the hedge. Now, you need to react quickly when you're targeting pigeons like this because if another feeding opportunity arises, they'll move on. Fortunately, I've already got a hide set up, so all I need to do is put out my decoys and get into position. We've got a really nice day for it, so hopefully we'll see a few birds. Right, well here's the hide. It's actually been in position for a few months because I was using it for targeting crows through the winter. Now, although it doesn't actually enable me to cover the field that the pigeons are flighting to, I'm not too worried because when I was watching them last night they were actually dropping in right in the middle of the field beyond air gun range. But what I did notice was that a few were dropping into a city tree that I can cover from this hide about 30 metres away. So what I'm going to do now is just put out a couple of decoys to hopefully encourage those birds to use this tree as a stopping off point today. Right, I'm just using two pigeon decoys today because it's not the main attraction here and it's going to look unnatural if there's a huge flock. So what I've got is what suggests there's just a pair of birds here that have maybe dropped down to feed on some clover. Also you'll notice that I'm using two different designs of pigeon decoy. Now I like to do that because rather than having two identical birds it just looks a little bit more natural and I think it appears just slightly more convincing to any pigeons that are flying in over the top. Right, and the final quick job I want to do before I get into the hide is just check the range back to where I'm going to be sitting because then, if any birds are obliging enough to land right in next to the decoys, I know exactly how far away they are when I take the shot. Okay, so that's about a 25 metre shot to the decoys and it also gives me a really good range marker if birds drop in a little bit behind them.
Right, this is a very sparse hide for this kind of shooting. And what I would often do is dress it out with some brambles and ivy just to help it blend in a little bit better with the surrounding countryside. However, because it's been in position for several months, it is now being pretty much taken for granted by the local wildlife. Another thing I've had to do with the hide today is just open it out a little bit at this side so that Nikki's got somewhere to sit and film. Now, I don't think it's going to compromise our concealment too much because most birds are going to be coming in straight over the top or from this side and not looking in from this side of the hide. Now, what else I'm going to do is just put on the scope cam today because I think in this cramped sort of environment, Nikki's going to struggle to see what I'm shooting at, particularly through the camo net. But if we've got the scope cam on, we should capture all of the action. We've actually got a pigeon in now, but it's completely obscured by twigs. I'm going to sit tight and hopefully it'll either move or attract another one. Right, just had a quick check through the scope cam there because through the scope cam it actually looked like that one had flown on but it's come fluttering down as headshot pigeons often do it's just a nervous reaction and that's actually a shot I really like to take when pigeons have got their back to me because you aim for the back of the head if you misjudge the range miss over the top you're not going to wound the bird and if you get the shot a little bit low you're either going to hit it in the back of the neck or between the shoulders, which offers a really nice clear path straight through to the vital organs without all the, the meat and bone in the way as you would have if the bird was presented from the front. It's a really good kill shot to take, even if you're using a legal limit air gun. That one was a really good clean kill, but it's a shot I wouldn't dream of taking if I was using a legal limit air gun. If that had been the case, I'd have gone for the headshot. But as it is, with the 30 foot pound day state firing two two air arms fields, the impact of that pellet smashing through the breastplate is enough to cause heart and lung failure and give you that really good clean kill. One thing worth pointing out is that I haven't broken cover to go out and retrieve the pigeons we've shot. Now the reason for that is that both of them have fortunately landed belly down. So they just look like a couple more pigeons out there feeding. If they'd landed belly up, 
that would definitely have spooked incoming birds, so I'd have had to broken cover, either moved them or brought them in out of sight. Right, it did actually look for a moment like that one was going to need a follow-up shot, but it was hit very squarely, just took a second or two to expire before it dropped. Now typically, that one has landed belly up, but to be perfectly honest with you, it may not have felt long to you, but we've been sat in here now for about two and a half, three hours. I'm starting to get pins and needles, so I'm gonna break cover now, go and pick up and call it a day. Well, that's not a huge bag, but it was a very enjoyable, if not very cramped session in the hide. Now that crow was a welcome bonus, and to be honest, we've heard quite a few croaking away this morning, so I'm gonna leave the hide in situ, come back again, and bring a few crow decoys with me, because I reckon there are still some corvids to be had here. An interesting session in the hide there. And now, it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by the Air Gun Center. Air guns are set to play a major role in the UK Game Fair's experience campaign to encourage people to give country sports a try. Big air gun names including BSA, Gamo, Armex and the Shooting Party have already signed up for the event, which takes place at Stony from the 22nd to the 24th of July. The Air Gun Training and Education Organisation will be running the air gun shooting ranges, and instructor Dave Mills has promised an air gunning experience like no other. Keep up with all latest announcements at ukgamefair.com. Team Air Arms made an impressive haul of medals at the BFTA Championships, hosted by Tondu in Wales, where Justin Woods claimed victory with a score of 37 out of 40. Teammates Simon Higgins, Dave Schofield and Jack Harris finished second, third and fourth respectively to secure a top four finish for the British air gun manufacturer. Basque, the National Gamekeepers Organization and the Northern School of Game and Wildlife are offering teenagers the chance to be gamekeepers for a weekend. The event takes place at Newton Rigg College in Penrith from Friday the 3rd to Sunday the 5th of June. Activities include game rearing and habitat management. And there's an air gun shooting session with Jerry Moss and his team from Penrith and District Red Squirrel Group. The competition is open to anyone aged 14 to 16 years. Simply write a short essay outlining your current experience of shooting or gamekeeping and future aspirations. And then email malcolm.riding at newtonrig.ac.uk. And finally, to mark the 50th episode of The Air Gun Show, we're offering you the chance to win a Tracer Lead Ray F600 lamping kit with $129.99 in a free competition. The powerful lamp casts a 220 lumen beam out to 200 meters and shifts between blue, green and red light with just a twist of a collar. It features a focusable beam and three levels of illumination and boasts a runtime of up to 15 hours. It also comes with an adjustable mount, attachments for 25 and 35 mm scope tubes, anti-spill snoot, stock mounted remote switch, rechargeable battery and a mains charger. The closing date is the 20th of May 2016. For full details, go to the Airgun Shooter website at www. 
agunmagazine.co.uk and click on the competition tab. That was the Agun Show News. BSA has a reputation for producing very accurate air guns that are also tough enough to cut it in the hunting field. And this week's test gun is no exception. It's the Scorpion SE in Realtree stock, guys. The camo stock really is the standout feature on this air gun. Though standout probably isn't quite the right word because the soft colours of the Realtree extra green pattern should do a great job of keeping it low key in the countryside something that's sure to appeal to hunters. The camo finish doesn't just look good, it also feels great. Although there's no checkering or stippling, the soft touch coating that's been applied to the wooden stock is very tactile and provides an excellent degree of grip, whether wet or dry. The Scorpion measures 88 centimetres and tips the scales at just over 3.1 kilos unscoped. Those proportions make it fairly compact and it's certainly going to be manageable for most shooters, whatever their build. The balance of the gun is excellent and much of that can be attributed to the design of the ambidextrous stock. The forend is nice and long and the rake of the pistol grip is just right to set you up for the trigger. Although I'd have liked a slightly deeper scallop for my palm, it's still comfortable whether shooting thumb up or around. And the high comb of the cheek piece is just right for good eye alignment with the scope. The Scorpion is equipped with BSA's famous cold hammer forged barrel, which should stand it in good stead when we come around to the accuracy test. It's fitted with a muzzle brake and you can remove that to reveal a thread if you want to attach a silencer to quieten it down. Engineering and metalwork finish are excellent, just as you'd expect from BSA. The long scope rails should accommodate most optics and I particularly like the fact that they aren't interrupted by the magazine which is neatly housed beneath. The rails are almost flush with the barrel so you can mount your scope nice and low. The Scorpion SE features the latest version of BSA's 10-shot rotary magazine which is made from high impact polymer with self lubricating PTFE to ensure that your pellet has a very slick journey to the breech. It's numbered so you know exactly how many shots you have left and a small white marker flags up when you're on your last pellet. The magazine is cycled by the throw of the bolt which also cocks the gun then probes home the pellet on the return stroke. The bolt handle feels really sturdy but is very smooth in operation and the indexing, cocking and loading cycle worked flawlessly during our testing. The two stage trigger unit is brilliant and the gently curved blade gives plenty of feel. The stop at the end of the first stage is very distinct and the second stage let off is crisp and predictable with no creep. It is adjustable but I couldn't find fault with the factory setting. The Scorpion has a very positive safety catch. Situated at the rear of the action, it's nicely positioned to operate with your thumb and, much to my liking, well away from the trigger. You push it back to make the gun safe and then push it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. Topping up with air is an easy job thanks to the quick fill inlet at the front of the cylinder. The 2.2 caliber test gun delivered more than 90 shots at around 11 foot pounds from a 230 bar fill. You can expect about the same in 0.25 caliber and around 65 in 177. And you can keep an eye on air reserves via the clearly marked gauge on the underside of the stock. Right, that's a quick roundup of the BSA Scorpion SE's main features. Let's put some pellets through it and see what it can do. Well, I've got to say this gun is an absolute joy to shoot 
and the fast strike hammer system certainly feels quick. Now looking down range, the target circle that I was aiming for, the one with the six in it, is only about 20 millimeters across. So that five shot group at 25 meters has got to fall within 10 millimeters. There's certainly no questioning this gun's accuracy. So, the BSA Scorpion SE shoots very well and also boasts a stack of great features, including a very neat multi-shot firing system and a soft touch camo stock. With a price tag of £629, it's also surprisingly affordable. Designed and built in Birmingham, it's a very accurate, very solid carbine PCP that should give years of dependable service. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Yeah.